I gotta go for a run tonight. No, you gotta, you gotta get, start. You have to come. Well, now I've turned, honestly. You should I, start meditating. The problem is I've developed a very healthy relationship with nothing, but <laughs> like <laughs> now that I'm lifting weights as much as I'm running, okay. it almost burns more calories. And so I'm at the point now actually where I'm enough to, if I want to keep lifting weights, I'm gonna have to start eating more. You have to start eating a lot. If you want to gain I'm not mass, you have to. all the time. I know. You, people, the, here's the thing that's, that they don't tell you. People who are big have to shovel food into their mouths when they don't want to. And it's disgusting. Yeah. I Even just, for people who are like overeaters or like who struggle with like, um, you know. And I want the good. I don't yeah, want yeah. just to feel full. So I think I'm going to have to become one of those people who fucking blends up frozen spinach and stuff just for like nice, raw, green base level, like Chicken, proteins. And you, like, you know what I mean? Protein, starch, and. Um, uh, vegetable because I don't want to put any of my chub back on but I don't want to keep getting so skinny it's it's yeah you just need more mass lean like you just need more like whole whole and I foods love, I have because I have look forward to weightlifting good? now as much as I like running and I that's never good. felt that way that's before. good because I think you're running is self-harm <laughs> it sometimes is it sometimes is you can tell I'm not doing well when I'm running like two a days also and stuff. look at people who are running they're either neutral or in a horrible pain have you ever seen people who win marathons yeah, it, they, they, they look they wrap like they're them on like, death's door, they Mary. They wrap them like they're scooped up from the Titanic. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just got asked to do the Lakefront Marathon in Milwaukee, uh. and that's a little too much. Um, It's in six weeks. I don't have time to put together 26 miles in six weeks. I can only right now do about six on the weekends. Like, I'm not a, right now, I can't pull out 10 miles like I used 5K's to. 5K is the limit. 5K is only 3.2 miles, though. That's really not bad. That's 30 minutes of running. That's my whole point. That sounds good and reasonable. Yeah. But six you don't, a it's six not, mile is such a good number though, and full hour of running like that, sixty minutes, it's nice. How about a fifteen minute um, a warm up and a fifty minute cool down? Put that in your pipe and smoke it. In your thirty minute. But I'm run telling you, for long with runs, varying intensity, you don't even get warmed up to like mile three. You don't. I know, but like that's my point is that long distance running and, and is not it's not efficient or helpful in the long run. That's just my opinion. Okay. But I, I'm a fitness um, enthusiast and I'm expert. I'm exploring the balance. I'm exploring the balance. Yeah. Because I when you run they, like I do, but you don't do the weight training, you turn into a skeleton. That's the problem. It's crazy. And those people, they do this. Yeah. Oh, when they, yeah. It's wild. G. No. Oh my God. No, I recently watched this. I watched a TikTok of a guy who, Marathon on he G. takes edibles and then runs long distances. And now so he'll be, he'll be like six sense. miles in and be like, I'm so high. But that doesn't sound pleasant. <laughs> but, but it makes something unpleasant a little less unpleasant. I think is what the point is. Without the focus, how do you keep going? I would just be like, and we're done. You know what I mean? Because you would come back to the edit would be like, what are you doing, girl? Hey, girl. <laughs> girl come back. Hey, hey girl. girl. Scott. <laughs> you, um, you know what I was thinking about recently? What? Are you familiar with the comedian Kathy Griffin? Not not actually. A we, little, we a little her, bit. We, she judged us once on Drag Race. I met her, I think, on like... Episode one, season yes. seven. Yeah. She has the Guinness Book of World Records record for specials by anyone. Not just, not a woman, not con- like anyone. Oh, she, how, what's the number? I think something like 22 specials. Shit. Um, a lot she mind. owns most of them now. I think she spent her career buying them back from Bravo. So now she owns all of her own content. Oh, wow. Smart lady. Long, 16 specials. Long career. My life Long on the D list. My life on the D list. Literally her and some cameras. That show was amazing. Yeah. And all she had was her and some cameras. And she just made up all the jokes on the fly. She left the cameras in her life. Yeah. The president of the United States targeted her for years. Oh, that's right. I and remember. And she still came out a star. Yeah unkillable unsinkable yeah. she really is going to be like did she have a cancer she had a lung cancer yeah and yeah. she didn't even smoke i no, just I, you know i i feel like that whole love her i love her i mean you know she, i know she's not everyone's taste comedically but the, well, nobody's uh, com- no comedian is everybody's taste but the um what do you call it the endurance of a career like that decades mm. and decades and decades like joan rivers it's amazing yeah and, well, a, i think a, that you have a woman that on stage depending on herself every night that's what that is. Yeah, sister is doing it for themselves. Anyway, she, I don't know her, and she doesn't. She doesn't know me, but just I think she's just good just for shout her. out to Kathy good Griffin. Good for her. Yeah, Kate you know? KG Jewelers. We shouldn't wait for people to die to talk about great. Like Pee Wee died, of course, which was a bummer. And I love Pee Wee, and it was fun to see that. the outpouring of love. But I'm like, yeah, bitch, we should talk about people when they're alive more. Why do we wait for people to die to talk about great they are? If you don't go on Twitter, if you're not constantly online, sometimes you miss these things because the news cycle is so. But the new cycle of celebrity deaths, I used to not, now every day on X, if you sign in, you find out which celebrity has died. And I, I hate, hate that. I hate X. Hate it. I hate, I hate it so much. But I got That's threads why... and she's, she's boot nasty too. It's all tired. <laughs> no, at this point, nothing new. We can't introduce a new, brand new social media platform, mama. That's, that's played out and corny. 
What's your face? And we're top not, to bottom. We're, we're not doing X. We're not doing X. Excuse me. Because I'm not used to, opening you, that app. But you also used to tweet. It was a verb. What do you know? I X'd something. I think you told me this. I X'd something. You told me this. It takes brand's dream of owning a verb. Yeah. Like oh, you Google that if you use Yahoo. It's yes. Googling. Like br- that is the dream for a brand. Yeah. Kleenex. You, exactly. Hand me a Kleenex. That's it's a, a chapstick. Titch. Exactly. Yeah. That's like a dream to come true for a brand. That means they've in, they're in the public sphere in the common like yeah. the common man's head forever. You take that and then you put it make it look like a cheap porn site. What the fuck is wrong with you? You are so nasty and so rude and so trifling and so know, horrible. And I know it's just a corporation. We shouldn't feel bad for companies. But I don't feel bad for company. I feel bad for myself. This is my issue. <laughs> Imagine you are somebody who put years of your life into developing Twitter and the branding and the yeah, social yeah, yeah. media. Or or maybe you are on the side of, let's say, some of the philanthropical endeavors. Sure. Let's say there's still tax dumps for corporations. But maybe Whatever. you were in charge of some of the good these corporations yeah. do with their money. And all that years of you helping to build, I mean, some part of your soul went into building this company yeah. and someone comes in and makes an absolute mockery of it yeah. so this quickly. rich fucking douchebag waltzes in with his like greasy gray skin and like his like blood diamond money and is like, actually, we're going to do this. And it like, and is embarrassing himself all day long. And everyone, he's so rich. Everyone's like, yes, sure, sure. Of I'm course. Like, <gasps> and then uh, just uh, crazy. So Forgot crazy. I to tell you something. What? Dave and I, during the monsoon, you know, it's been raining here. We watched both Kill Bills just to check in on that. Back to back? Yes, just to check in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still, so, what? Love. She not only has no notes, she has notes for everyone. That movie, <laughs> that movie killed every movie. I it know. is every shot, every musical sting, every outfit, every line, the dialogue, the kung fu. Yeah, the, the Japanese. Acting. Yeah. Uma I can't anchors <sighs> that rise. So even though it is a roller coaster it has the heart right here the yeah. whole time i think my favorite part is when she comes out and she sits down at the um the cafe the, can i have a glass, glass of water, water please it's like it's so amazing it's, she the fact that you know i she obviously works so hard her she and zoe um uh bell Dash and, okay <laughs> work so hard and it's so clear like and also she got like you know the thing about the ter- the car and everything getting injured you know, the, oh, she yeah. did get injured. Yeah, huh? and it was a big kind of thing. It was a big like thing, it, and it was terrible. But, um, it, but she worked so hard in that movie, those movies, so hard, and she should have gotten an Oscar nomination. I'm sorry, she should have gotten an Oscar nomination. Yeah, because it's an action movie. David, it's checked, like David a, was like, I wonder if they got any Oscars for this. No, and he was like, maybe sound, maybe did. sound design or stunts or whatever. Did she not get an Oscar for that? Because Cause they the hate Academy, comedy. because she's not in a British accent wearing a corset. Talking to Hugh Dancy, yeah, or fucking uh, Colin Firth, like, <laughs> or she's not getting like uh, gang banged by a bunch of like Nazi bikers. It's she's not playing a, a bedside nurse to Victorian children. She doesn't have brown teeth, and she didn't like just you know. Yeah, it's not it, you know. It's but then I watched some other Tarantino, Tarantino movies I'd never seen. Which ones? Um, I'd never seen um, Inglorious Bastards. It was so good, but so much reading, so much reading, so much reading, many languages. <sighs> But really good. I need to talk to you about Diane Kruger. Diane Kruger. Who's that? The blonde actress in the film. Who plays the actress? Yes. Amazing. When she died, I was Mama, devastated. French, English, and German. And she eats. She eats. She is so good in that movie. I, I couldn't it's believe she died. Strangled to death. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. Um, the movie, gentleman wait, wait, who plays the the Nazi, um, um, the not the the Jew I, hunter. It's um, it's a. So scary to he watch. Is so, so chilling. Incredible. So evil. What did you think about Brad Pitt though? Because it took me a while to get along. We're hanging night. We're killing Nazis. I love when he's playing an while. Italian. He's like, that was funny. Yeah, Buongiorno. Yeah. Grazie. Grazie. That love. I thought was funny. When I saw it in the theater, I was. it took me a little while. It, I don't even think I fully latched on to his character because I thought it was too cartoonish because everybody else is just sweeping the rug. All of it. With their acting. I loved it so much. I mean, a fairy tale that is very anti-Nazi, like love A it. revisionist revenge tale yeah, is so it. satisfying. When when Hitler is getting like uh, pulverized by machine gun fire in a, mm-hmm. in a theater that's burning down filled with Nazis, you literally almost get hard. Yeah. Because you're like, oh my God. Like it's like it's so an, that uh, revenge uh, juice is like so powerful. It's so potent. So potent. And, they, and if you don't know about those events, they paint it so well that you just... yeah. You it's are crazy. ready for that. You are ready for that Jew hunter to get it the whole movie. Mama, and when it happens, you're like. Time. Hey. 
extra, extra, we are going on tour. That's right, Katya and I are taking the bald and the beautiful out on the road. So come see us in the flesh retelling the same old stories. One of us while... may or may not interrupt the other. And we can guarantee that we will talk about a movie in great detail that premiered 27 years ago. That's right. For tickets and more info, please check out TrixieandKatya.com. Ooh, there ain't no other way. What I didn't like about his other revenge movie, Django Unchained, is I that- I watched that after that. Oh, so that left me wanting more. Okay. I don't think, I wasn't satisfied by the end of Jamie it. I could watch Jamie Foxx do just about anything. My God, he is gorgeous. My God. My God. Wait, wait, wait. Let's go back to the, the Inglorious, though. Um, the the scene where, the first scene, the opening scene. Where yes. They're in so the, scary. It is so, scary. so fucking scary. And it unfolds so slowly, and it's so scary. It's so fucking crazy. <sighs> it's like- Oof, that's one of my I loved that movie so much the woman who owns and then you know the woman she ultimately owns the, the theater cinema, yeah. and when she kisses her boyfriend because oh, they're gonna it was so good oh, I was so, so, yeah it was crazy anyway good. I just but really Kill Bill is my god she eats <sighs> she gobbles that she the opening scene being killing uh Bernita Green the the opening I have before I've, you even know what's going on you're like yeah I have a gripe though mm. two gripes why do they why do they show um, Sophie Fatale, Oren Ishii's assistant at the church in the flashback on a cell phone. They do? Yeah, they do for some reason. Right before she chops off her arm, you know how- uh, They do? They do. And I'm like, why was she there? Her assistant? She wasn't even working for the Yakuza then, or she was, I don't Maybe know. Maybe she worked for Bill at the time. Who knows? Maybe. It was just a strange thing. It was a strange thing. She's so beautiful too, and she was great Julie and glorious. Ba- yes, bastards. she was the- uh, The the French, and the translating, with all of it. Yeah. She was so beautiful. Ugh. Walking with the dog, the whole movie. Cunty. Again, I just, you multi- know, a little long. It was hard for me to, you know, it's hard for me to sit through those long movies. And you know, the, the story's way rich. too long. You have to be ready to glue yourself in. If you step away I to can't. go to the fridge no, once, no, 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 you no, miss no, no, something. No. That's the, those are the, the types of movies that I want to watch, want to have like, they want to have, uh, Claw clamps on my eyeballs yeah. from start to finish. And just like the fantasy of like um, white supremacists being the enemy. It also, of course, brought me back to HBO Watchmen. Yeah. It's like, I mean, but I love, I loved it. And uh, <sighs> just watching Kill Bill again. I mean, I've seen that movie no less than 20 times in my life. Mm. And every time I'm like, it takes me back to, I was like 13 years old when that came out. No, 14, 15. Yeah. Because I was, no, I was like 19. Okay. So when I must the have second been- one came out. I, I must have been actually 13 or 14. Yeah, yeah, you probably were. And I remember I was uh, up late watching it, never seen it before, rented the DVD and I'm watching it and it finished. And the finish is, the ending is like, does she know her daughter's still alive? Yeah. And I remember being like, oh. I've told you what I went and did. I saw it and then I went to the theater that night and watched the second one because that's the timing. It was out on DVD when the second one was in the theater. Lucky you. I was like, oh, I'm going right to that motherfucking theater. And I was like, I've, that's never happened. That's so you cool. You came to that place for magic. I, I sure did. That's I was the like, definition of like- I will not be left on this cliffhanger. Yes. I would have probably killed myself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> every character in Kill Bill. I mean, every, um, uh, Hattori Hanzo, Jaime. Yeah. Um, uh, Gogo Yubari, all of it, girl. Nah, all of it. Um, Michael Park, who's the, off, yeah. he's also the sheriff. He yes, is. Yes, he is. He's, yes. Are you I sure? Just cut your face. Yes, My, he plays both characters. People are good actors. He is incredible. P- speaking died. of the gentleman who uh, plays uh, the Nazi general in um, *In Glorious Bastards*, uh-huh. who's also in *Django Unchained*. Yes, he was also in *Downsizing*, that movie I told you to watch with uh-huh. Hong Chow. Yeah, he's been in a lot. He's where you his gotta name? watch. His if name? you don't watch Hong? *Downsizing*, I'm taking you out at the. Okay, legs. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it for Hong. Hong She'll Chow. eat you up. Yeah, and She'll that faggot Matt Damon. Yeah. <laughs> Are you obsessed with the fact that his daughter had to t- tell him to start using the word faggot? Start using it? Stop. Stop. <laughs> oh, and I didn't know that. He said that to press. He said that in an inter- interview, like casually. I, I think I that's so good. Fierce. I mean, people need to hear that men like him get corrected and pay attention to the correction. Yeah. But I mean, it's also like he didn't know that he's so, he didn't know that that would be inappropriate. To yeah. Say. Well, I think, so I mean, who's going to correct him? That's a good point. His if daughter. He's in the makeup room and some gay makeup artist is there and he says faggot. Are you really yeah. going to say something? You're going to lose your job before Matt Damon. I think we, that's when we, we go back to our little sexual harassment training and we figure out what to do. We hope to. But so uh, speaking of sexual harassment in the workplace, um, if you, what's your favorite kill scene in Kill Bill? What's your favorite set piece? It is. For me, it's the trailer. Elf. It's the trailer. It's. <laughs> I told David, I, I would just, watch a longer <sighs> version of this. I want to know more oh, about Dietrich and yeah. L's relationship because they hate each other. 
do, and you kind of do, accept that. Do, 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 I mean, do. you get that Elle's probably jealous because that's yeah. Bill's favorite. Yeah, and she's blonde, and, and she's younger, she's a little bit prettier. She's, you know, and she, once once she gets out of the picture, he's she's romantic with him. Right. Elle, but, she the scene where Bud is dying from the bite, and she's yes. just reading from those pages. And she ah! says her, her biggest regret is that the the best warrior in the world had to die from your scumbag ass. Like a, uh, that that moment where she like gives her respect, gives her props. I like thought that was so like women supporting women. Yeah, <laughs> what I mean, it was what? like like she hated her so much, but she because she was the best. Yeah, and and then remember in the beginning she tries to euthanize her. Yeah. while she's sleeping as yeah. like a compliment to her being a great warrior. This is a luxury that people of our kind are never rarely afforded. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And you, I mean, I like the honor of that. Even though these are murderers and crime doers, there's, there's an a honor. Code. There's a code, and yeah. that's interesting to play with on screen. Totally. I th- I love the moment where I love Lucy Liu's big moment because it also like actually correct kind of a, she's not Chinese. You know what I mean? Like she's her heritage is like. She doesn't speak Mandarin, I don't think. You know, she doesn't speak Japanese, certainly. So, like, her character had to be, to make sense, has to be, like, mixed race. Yeah. And so, like, they kind of deal with that, well, a half a half white woman would never be ahead of the Yakuza. And so, they, you know, she's like, you know, that with the monologue where she says, yeah. if anybody else, if, if the subject of my Chinese, Japanese, or American heritage yeah, yeah. comes up, if any, you know. She goes I just, in. I it's love amazing. that line it's so amazing. much. I collect your fucking head. It's amazing. If People anybody should do that in a mix. Yeah, the more dr- well, I ugh. different there's, times. There was a lot of kill bills back in the day. There was. Um, I used to do a Gogo Yubari number, and it, you know, I had like a blonde wig with like the same haircut and stuff, and I had oh, one of those yeah. swinging balls. Probably wouldn't do it today. <laughs> um, but at the time, I had a chain with a stupid little like a dodgeball okay. that I taped <laughs> to the end that, of the chain that, that I sprayed stuff. silver. And I was in the club. I forget what I was doing. It yeah. was like, you spin me right yeah, round. Yeah, yeah. And then one night the ball fell off the chain and flew across the club. And I retired <laughs> that number. Not safe. <laughs> I was feeling myself after a number at a state nightclub in, on a Thursday night in um, Boston. My shoe fell off and hit somebody in the eye. The heel hit somebody in the eye. You know, drag is about doing drag things is that you wouldn't. It was about looking back and, and doing things you wouldn't do now. Um, who is their favorite? So... Who's we don't your, have to talk about Kill Bill I, the whole podcast, but it really to. goes. Okay, it goes so hard. Kill Bill, then who's your favorite character in um, uh, in Glorious Bastards? Who would you fuck out of the the um? Carol Brad Pitt. The no, but be- besides him. Oh, the um, the the bear, the bear, Jew. the Jewish bear. That's Eli Roth, I think. Yeah, bitch. <laughs> he came on screen, and David goes, "I bet you like him." Uh, and I went, "Yeah, yeah. bitch. <laughs> I do." You see this boner, bitch. I, he's gorgeous. <laughs> when he comes out with that bat. Oh yeah, uh, ju- it's they, hammer time. And they have him. I know it's hammer time. Juiced out, juiced up. They, it, they put the trend in he's that. So yeah, totally. He's so hot. He's so hot. Big eyebrows. I love men with big eyebrows like yeah. that. You know, you couldn't even see his asshole so hairy. Yeah, I believe he was in. Oh, he was in um Death Proof. He directed that. He did. Yeah, I'm so stupid. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. He directed that, and he directed Planet Terror. No, sorry, Tarantino directed Death Proof. Eli Roth directed oh, yeah. Planet Terror. Eli Roth, that gentleman, yes, he is at the bar in Death Proof, and he's like, oh, the girls yeah, don't yeah. want to go home with us, but we give him another drink. Yeah, They're yeah, like yeah. plotting to. He get- plays always a scumbag. He's in the fucking. Um, he plays a, sk- a sleazy agent in the uh, the Idol. Yeah, the Idol. He is. He looks like a sleaze bag. I think we, for Live what, Nation. Have you ever seen the film Bruno? Oh yeah, Sasha Baron Cohen. She eats too. Oh my, we she, don't have to. This is a movie podcast. It's okay. Don't, stop I'm apologizing. Sorry. Stop apologizing. I'm vibing. I can't tell if people like when we talk about movies or if they're like, girl, who cares? <laughs> this isn't movie film. This isn't is blockbuster. It, no. This isn't Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, this, is, this, this, isn't, and this, isn't, I, this isn't the. Shit school and Hebert. <laughs> Shebert. <laughs> this isn't the AMC, like. Do people ever go? I wonder if people work at movie theaters. Do people ever go in not knowing what to see and then ask for a recommendation? I wonder. I'll tell you this. I did once. I went into the movie theater blind with a girlfriend and we it was between Broken Hearts Club, which is a, a lighthearted gay rom-com or Requiem for a Dream. We chose the re- door number, that one, and w- walked blindly into Requiem for a Dream. And that's heavy. Right? I've never she seen that. She sobbed uncontrollably. Oh, she was, as the credits were rolling and the lights came up, she was sobbing so uncontrollably. I started to get worried because it was so, the movie was so intense. It was so intense. And it's not a feel good film. We later watched Broken Hearts Club. It's fucking stupid as hell. Like the stupid light gay rom com. I've not seen that. Oh, it's not worth watching. Either of those. Dean Kane is now he's like a thumper. Dean Koontz. Dean Koontz is Matt and he's I probably wrote books. <laughs> we don't have to do that ever again. It will never it will never occur. Shh. It will never occur. No. If I had a middle name, I wouldn't even th- I don't even think I'd be doing signatures anymore. 
Oh I don't want to do anything close to writing. I think honestly, um, I'm going to become I, illiterate. I'm going to forget. I'm like the Samantha from Sex, Sex, Sex in the City, when, uh-huh. and <laughs> Sex in the that, City. That actress, what's her name? Kim Cattrall. Kim, when she says, "I don't even for one second want to no, no. be doing anything it's, result resembling writing." No, That's my version. Oh, she said, oh, "Yeah, she says I am uninterested in spending 30 minutes doing something I don't want to do," which yeah. is a totally. I think it's a psycho thing to say. It's a psycho thing to say. But it's not a psycho thing to feel because I certainly feel it. Thirty minutes. Of course, you don't feel like it. Like no one wants to. I don't know. Shave their legs if you have to. It sucks. It's it takes. But you don't have to spend thirty minutes of it. Oh, that's what I did. I went to fucking Six Flags, bitch. Oh, tell me, Mama. So we at first we get there. Of course, Wimberly. It's good to go with Wimberly because he, like, he's like my mom, running, speed walking, speed walking, basically sprinting from ride to ride. Can I guess the outfit? It's a tracksuit matching top and bottom. No, actually, she was. She looked like Bryce Dallas Howard from Jurassic Park. She, she was in like a button-up white no, poplin no, shirt. Sorry, Laura Dern from Jurassic Park. Okay, it was like a t- uh, tank top a, with khaki a white shorts. Button-up. Okay, <laughs> another white button-up. I don't know. She was giving Meg Ryan. Okay, <laughs> because the hair is you know a after moment. the after the um each ride it was like more voluminous. Sure. She, so she would go from like, she's clipping in an extension after every ride. From like angels, the <laughs> city of angels to like you've got mail into. Like, <laughs> It was just a whole journey. Uh-huh. So, but the, uh, I what? saw when Harry met Sally for the first time. Did you like it? Not really. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Carrie Fisher though. I kept being like, yeah, I'm, I'm made to believe that these people are soulmates and they meet all these times and they never get together. Also, I'm not, listen, it's none of my business, but I am not, can, I'm, I'm going to say this in a way that's diplomatic. I am fascinated by the, t- by the fact that there was a time in which that, w- that leading man was, the desirable one. He is hot younger. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna be. I don't. Dishonest I don't mean here. to he is beautiful younger. Him. Okay, that's. It's interesting. I have. I just a, was like. No, it doesn't do. They meet all these times and they never fall in love. I mean, I guess that's supposed to inspire people, right? It's supposed to be like, well, maybe I have met the right one. They just haven't realized it yeah, yet. I don't know. I, I just haven't spilled enough hot coffee on him in a bookstore, and my witty like um, spinster friend hasn't get, thrown enough quips at me to like maybe realize the truth. Yeah. Like what the or the book sh- the bookstore that I own hasn't been taken over by a conglomerate yet, Tom Hanks and you've got mail. It's rarely like that, you know. In real life, when you fall in love with someone, it's immediate and it's sort of and it's forever. It's non negotiable. You uh, know it right away. Mm. You don't like. I love Josh. That never happens. It never happens. You're like, I'm covered in shit. I just hadn't smelled it right. yet. It's like, <laughs> it's like what? You know, and the way that? sex works in the brain. If you really are that attracted to them, it's all you can think about when you're around them. You and do. it doesn't creep it's up. It's in the question. front. Not a question. But all things being equal, unless you have some very significant kind of psychological, emotional, traumatic, whatever, it's the, one of the easier things to know about. One of the, like, you don't need a spidey sense for it or a, or a college education. You don't. You know, um, but the Six Flags, so every all my favorite rides were closed. And I was like, perfect. I'm going to kill myself. I saw X2 was closed, huh? That's when I got the razors out to slip my wrists. And then we go to the Viper. That's closed. The Viper's that's when a I got good one. That, that's when I got the rope out to hang on myself. Sorry. That's hard. No, no, no. But then, so what ended, up, what ended up happening is that I went on all the rides that I, all the rides that were previously not working were working. All new rides I got to go on. Who gave it to you on the rides? Who was um, the one? They all gave it to me. In really? In the front and the back. Okay. From the front to the back. What's the best ride there, you think? At Tatsu? The, at, this is on the mountain. X2 is the best ride. So it depends on what you're looking for. So we, Tatsu was the first one. It starts with your starts with your uh, you're in a seated harness. It tilts you forward, so you're you're facing down. Yes, legs and arms dangling. That's how Superman is. Uh, Superman tips you up, so you're flying like this. Uh, no, Superman, you is a hydraulic one. It's a it's a shot. It's a speed uh, shot up. Batman, you fly. Batman's t- Batman's amazing. Batman's turned- well, I've only been to the one in Gurney Mills, Illinois. Mama, I screamed. I screamed. I wasn't ready for Tatsu. I wasn't ready for it because you're, it. You could fall out of the thing. You're up so high at the top of the thing, dangling. What do you think about people with these scream out rides that aren't that scary? Well, it. That's well. Some people do get really like when people pass out. Well, do you remember when that. we were in Copenhagen or Denmark or whatever, and I went to Tivoli Gardens by myself and I sat on one of those drop rides. You know the ones that take them and just drop you. Yeah. I hate those, and I don't know what I was thinking because I know I hate those. Mm. The second I'm strapped in, I was like. You fuckers. I, I was looking for blame. We did that. We looking. did it. We did it too. It's and the girls, there's three little blonde girls speaking Denmarky and like, hoika boika boika, you know, and I'm like looking at them like Danish. Like, girl, 
girl, what are we doing? Yeah, and I <laughs> know it was two of them, probably for weight. Two of them, me in the middle, and then one. So it's three little blonde girls who are maybe nine, nine or ten. Are they- and I'm in the middle, full grown and bald, like. It scared me so much. It's so scary. It I, scares. I don't scream for oh. joy. My actually whole body tightens. And if you could see my face in those rides, it's like this. They, yeah, it's you like can. not happy. They take a picture uh, at Tatsu. They took a picture. I saw your picture. How, yeah, what yeah. was that face? Yeah. Um. So, but the first thing I was forget is the hat. You have to take your hat off, bitch. You bald bitch. bitch. Yeah. Or you'll lose um, it. You'll lose it. And I take your phone out of your pocket. Don't oh, chance that, it. No, no, that you always do. But so the last roller coaster, it the, the hat blew back. And I pinned the crown of my head to the back of the seat and held it there for like 20 seconds. Where really like, engage your core. I was like, like yeah. I, it feels like you burn 1600 calories on all these rides. Because it sucks. You're, no, 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 no. It's thrilling. It hurts. Wonder Woman. Sometimes rides hurt. The Riddler hurts. Hate her. The Riddler can suck Sometimes my the pussy. rides hurt. It jostles your head. It, it, it's or not- like, you know, something like a Gravitron that spins where you're plastered to the wall. Is that fun or does it hurt? Oh no, that's fierce. Cause that's G-force. You better lay low. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the ones that jostle you around, like when they they shift to the side and you like, um, your body hits the, the 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 metal. It's really horrible. I don't see her. No, I don't like to be hurt. But uh, Wonder Woman, she is a single coaster, the largest, uh, longest single coaster. So it's just one of you, one in front of the other. Wow. She's fast and she's long. She fucks you for like four fucking minutes. It's like you're out of breath. You're like, stop, stop it, <laughs> like stop it, you please. You can't really like, breathe on those like, rides. You're sometimes. like, oh my god. You're like, it's and then it goes again. That she's crazy. She's like, um, it's like a false ending, and then she goes back, and then she's like, she like fucks you to the front, the back, and the side, and puts her dick in your ear, and it's like slaps you with it. It's crazy. And at the end, there's like Gal Gadot on a TV, like thank she's you like, for riding yeah. day ride. She's like, hello, no. Worst actor in the whole. Fucking I know you Hollywood feel that pantheon. way. I, I like her. She's so bad. Anyways, <laughs> um, the Tatsu was amazing. A twisted Colossus where wood meets steel. Kal-El, that's Superman's name, Kal-El, right? Kal-El, no. Kal-El. Yeah. Oh, well, she really biffs it hard in that movie. Speaking from a good actress myself. In Watchmen, Regina King's husband, who's the secret Dr. Manhattan, mm-hmm. his name is Cal. It was right in front of us the whole time. Think about it. Think about we it. We knew it. Think about it. Think about it. How but, do they know? Have You haven't been to Six Flags Magic Mountain on gay night? No, you never invite me. I was filming. I wouldn't be able to go. You've anywhere. Ne- you're never able to go. It's always the funnest night of the year. I have pushed. Um, it's so, but it was nobody like, ever invites me to anything because they think you're busy, but you are. Yeah. But sometimes when I'm busy, I have like a volatile reaction to even being invited. Cause I'm like, Oh, some of us have to work. Do you know what I mean? Like, so <laughs> yes, I, I do, probably cause... push people away. <laughs> He's like, why did, why do people not want a haircut by me? Because I'm blind. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I push people, I push the people away by being like, no, some of us have a job, but have yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, have fun doing your little stupid gay thing, but I have to work and make money because I'm a real adult. It's at night, right? Because they can't trust gays in the dark. Out, in- well, so out on the mountain, it's the, cra- the crazy thing about it is that there's, it's the most peaceful like um, collection of like strangers in the dark, at, in public. It's so like chill and mm-hmm. fun. And it's dark. Like they don't spring for extra electricity for the nighttime. <laughs> It's really boo boo, actually. Like it could be the lighting is horrible. It could be really like they could actually use somebody gay to go out on the mountain and you know curate it a little bit. Uh huh. But the whole is they they just stay open till one in the morning. But they don't do the daytime because they can't trust gay people in the daylight or what? I think just because they don't. The connotation there to me, I'm sorry, is that they are hiding us. (laughs) No wrong. Um, that's one way to look at it. The other way is that they're allowing you a a space to be queer and uh, free of the burden of harassment or children. People in LA have been driving so crazy. Today, Dave and I were have driving been? and someone, it's always, someone just ran a red light in front of us today and we were like, love that. I love it when they- like, Someone was in front of us and you know where you can see someone's silhouette? So it's kind of like puppet theater yeah, yeah, yeah. where you can tell they're on their phone or whatever. This guy had about maybe this length curly hair mm-hmm. and zero hands were on the wheel and we just kept seeing this with the hair. Fingers through the hair and fanning it out I'm for a-, a good 30 seconds. And I was like, Where's who's the- steering? The girlfriend who's blowing him. And he wasn't looking in the mirror. He was just doing this. It's like, oh so it's not God. even a styling issue. It's like a sensation journey. I've seen people, you know, my street, insane, dangerous, uh, blind turns, no sidewalks. People have been going 40 miles an hour texting on their phone around those corners. And I want, that's at that point, I, I want to be like, God, it would be nice to be like, have a superpower that could just pluck that car out of my giant hand and bring him into my living room and give him. I wish Talk I had the them. power, like when I see someone driving crazy, I wish I had the power to put them on timeout. Do you, you, you just stop 
hammer time and yeah. then like, and like move to the side of the road and then they have to watch like a, a two hour harassment video or something you're like you stop time you erase their car you take off their like you leave their underwear on obviously you don't want to humiliate them but yeah but you take their clothes and then you just put them on the side of the road yeah and be like you'll get this car back at the end of the day kind of like in high school when they take away your phone yeah no you'll get the car back when you like realize and tell me exactly why you did what you did what you did because yeah. you know better you got a license at one point you knew better that's Oh, I don't know if they know. I mean, I don't. But I don't have a license anymore, so I guess I can't talk. But you. <sighs> but I observe. Maybe as a passenger, I do full time observing, so I see driving. I know unsafe you driving. You know what's when I going see on. Yeah. yeah. You you know to get scared when you should be scared. Um, we, I stopped short one time. There's things went flying. It was absolutely terrifying. Um, a lot of weaving. No, weaving. no, and, and no. Hollywood blink- Boulevard. No blinker. Just <sighs> who needs a blinker? They should know. They should catch your vibe. I can't believe I. You know, I run through L.A. almost every day on foot. I can't believe I've never been hit. Well, I can't uh, believe I've never been hit. This, the, the streets are very unsafe for this. Uh, this kills me though. At least you're running. Well, that's why I stick to the because, busiest streets because they're, if you run down Hollywood Boulevard, yeah. people are used to you're looking for foot traffic. Yeah. 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 If you run side streets in LA rolling stops, oh, you're yeah, lucky yeah. if you Forget get a rolling it. stop from these people. Also, I'm, I'm, I love it at a huge intersection where there's one person, you know, you get the green, you're desperately trying to turn right on a green mm-hmm. light forever. And, and someone's like, Slow motion. They're like, That's or, you, co- or you can turn left, like you, your window to turn left. At uh-huh. the, you have two opportunities, like during the green light, and then some fucking some Someone stupid takes bastard their time. is like, or the car in front of you takes their time, and the light is turning red, and you're already mid intersection. You're like, go. Uh, well, see, yeah, but that see, that's your fault because you shouldn't you shouldn't do that. T, you you're know? right. But um, the it's fascinating to observe the little intricacies of like what exactly in the, would be the best thing to do in this situation. Yeah, because I never took driver's ed. How'd you learn to drive? I didn't really. I just kind of picked it up. They give your license at 18 if you do that. No weird. In Massachusetts, you can get your license at 18 if you I take the take test. It. The driver's ed, the summer to. thing, two weeks. Yeah, I didn't want to do it. I don't know why. It was so boring. And plus, <sighs> all my friends were older. They already had cars. Driving scares me. It should. It's terrifying. It, it, it should It should me. scare the shit out of you. It scares me. I think that's a very rational fear. Mm-hmm. Um, wait, wait. Let me just give you more of a recap. Um. All the people at Magic Mountain is so nice. I saw um, the House of Avalon, Gigi. Looks like a fucking supermodel. Seeing Gigi Good come off of the, the roller coaster looking perfect. I was like, is that Christy Turlington? Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They, for me, are like the modern day supermodels. Yeah. Like seeing Naomi um, Smalls or like uh, Simone like out in the, out in the wild. The They're real like, beauties, yes. Real fucking models. They look crazy. So good. We have the same job as them. No. That seems wrong. I- <laughs> Do you ever feel miscast in your own life? Um, I, I say, I think I should be behind the camera. I don't think I should be in front of it. No, like, you remember the stories like in Back to the Future, how there was one Marty McFly and then they swapped it out? Oh, I never saw Back to the Future. Okay, in Back enough. to the Future, before it was Michael J. Fox, it was another gentleman. Uh-huh. And sometimes in life, I'm like, Is there a person named when Biff? When is in somebody going to come tap me and be like, It's not working? Oh, no. Somebody's going to come live in your house and take your job because you're not working out. You know what I mean? Come on. Come on over, come on over, baby. Yeah. Um, well, on that note, listeners, thank you so much. And listen, we will be back here next week with more Dirty Ted and Stephanie talk. <laughs> Stay hot. Stay hot.